Greetings, you psychedelic nutjobs. Today, I am going to be walking you through my MIDI setup. The reason I'm making this video is because in my previous video, which was the review of Ollie's Psyche Volume 2, I demonstrated excessively and extensively why it is pretty powerful to jam around with your MIDI controller trying out your presets, recording audio in. So if you didn't see this video, go check it out. The link is gonna appear somewhere here. So when you watch this video, you'll know why this is pretty powerful. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how you map the macros of your instrument. So your synthesizer, whether it's Serum or Vital or whatever, to your instrument track and how you save that. And if you stay till the end of the video, I have a real treat for you. So make sure you watch it till the end. And without further ado, let's dive right in. So here we are in Ableton, right? So the first thing you want to do is you want to grab an instrument. So in our case, or in my case, that is going to be Serum. So we're going to load Serum here, right? So the next thing you want to do is you want to create an instrument track of your instrument, if that makes sense. So you go to your instrument and you click on Command or Control G. So now you've essentially grouped it, right? Which creates an instrument track and you go to the little button right here. So we have four macros here. So let's reduce that to four because it's aesthetically more pleasing. And now what you want to do is you want to hit M right here, and you want to map the macros of your instrument to your instrument track, like so. So they're going to appear here. And then you map it to the macros, right? So, like so. And then you hit M again. And now what you have is your instrument track is controlling your synthesizer or whatever. Which is pretty useful because then you can use it to automate stuff in your arrangement view and stuff like that, right? So you don't want to do this every time you load up Serum or Vital or whatever, right? So what you want to do is you want to save that to your user library. And you do that by hitting the save button right here. And you re re let's call it tutorial rack. Ooh. I really need to take a typing course. Cool. So we have, <laughs> we have our rack here. It's called tutorial rack. And now when we delete this, and we load it back in, we have our macros mapped to our instrument. So the next thing you want to do if you want to jam around like I did with your MIDI controller, you want to press Command or Control M. And then this thing is going to appear right here. And then you want to click on the macro you want to map. And then you move the fader or knob accordingly, like so. And you see it appearing here. So if you want to delete them, uh, if you made a mistake, you just press on one and then delete it, right? And then you hit Command M again, and now you have it saved. Like so, right? But the pretty annoying thing about Ableton is if you want to you, you, there is actually essentially no way you can save the MIDI mapping. So let me let me show you what I mean. So if I delete this and I put it back in, it's gone, right? Which is pretty irritating. So that brings me to the treat of this video. So if you stay till the end, you're going to get a pretty good tip. So for the longest time, this, this nagged me, right? Why doesn't Ableton give you the option to save you, the mappings to your MIDI controller, to your instrument track? It's pretty trivial, right? And I was complaining about it to friends and I was looking around and I couldn't find any solution for it. Until a friend of mine found a interesting device which allows you to do exactly that. It's a device from a guy called Ableton Drummer, Max for Life device. It costs $15 and it's pretty nice, man. So I'm not affiliated in any way and I'm going to show you uh, right now why it's pretty powerful. So let's get back into the DAW, right? 
So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to your settings and you do that by hitting command comma in case you didn't know. And you want to go to your MIDI controller, so the one you're using. So for me, that is the Nano Control 2. And you want to deselect Sync and Remote. And you want to make sure that Track is selected. All right? And then you quit this again. And then, you, uh, when you download the Max for Live device from uh, the website, which I am going to post uh, the link to in the description down below, so you can go grab it for yourself. So when you download it, you get three Max for Live devices. The first one is Forward to Global MIDI Map, and it's going to be apparent in a second uh, which one is used where and how. And the next one is for audio instruments. So if you want to save the macros of your instrument tracks on an audio track, you need to use this one. And the other one is you have if you have a MIDI track, right? So what you want to do is you want to create a MIDI track here. Oh, oops, excuse me. So uh, if you, in case you didn't know, I'm guessing most of you know this. If you want to create a new MIDI track, the shortcut is uh, Control or Command, Shift, and then T, right? So you want to create a MIDI track right here. And you want to drop the forward to global MIDI map Max for Live device, point AMXD, right here. You want to drag that to your MIDI track, all right? And the next thing you want to do is you want to go to your ins and you want to select your MIDI controller, which is again my Nano Control 2. And you want to make sure that IN is selected so it's receiving MIDI. Now, if you move the anything on your MIDI controller, it's going to light up here, like so, which indicates it's receiving MIDI. Cool. So um, what's important to note here is that this is not going to work if you don't have the track we just selected as a standard MIDI track in your uh, session. So what you want to do is you, if you have a template, so if you don't have a template, you need to have a template because it's useful, but that aside, you need to save that MIDI track with a device we just showed as a standard MIDI track in your session, otherwise it's not gonna work. So let's get back into the DAW, right? So here we are again back in Ableton, and we have our MIDI track right here. So let's go back to our instrument track. You want to go, as I said before, select the, the, the device that is used for MIDI. So that's the global MIDI map, MIDI, whatever here. And you want to put that, bef uh, bef no, <laughs> you want to put that after your uh, macros right here, right? And then you hit refresh to make sure it's working. And then you hit that hashtag right here and the empty square and then the S and then you want to, so it's gonna, it's gonna flash right like this and you wanna move the fader or knob or whatever accordingly, like so. And then you hit the hashtag again and now it's mapped, right? So what you then want to do is you want to re-save this. So you want to save the instrument track with the device we just loaded in. So the way you do that is it's the same like we did before. You save it with that little thingy right here, and then you call it whatever we're going to call it for the sake of this tutorial, tutorial rack mapped, right? So now we have it here. So if I delete this now and put it back in my MIDI mappings to my MIDI controller are saved and the same applies if you close the session so if I close this this right here so let's close this um, we need to have this MIDI track saved into our session remember that's pretty important so let's um, save this session, call it tutorial whatever, tutorial whatever, cool, now it's saved and then we close it. I'm doing this just to demonstrate that it works even if you close the session. Here we are and then we go to our Ableton again. It's a nice background, isn't it? 
made that with uh, Mid Journey. So here we are back again. Uh, let's select the session we were just in, tutorial, whatever. Cool, here we are. Let's go to our user library, which is here. And I think we call it tutorial rack, tutorial rack mapped. There we go. And then we drop that into our session. And now, uh, we don't have to remap anything. Pretty neat, huh? So thank you Ableton Drummer for making this. If you enjoyed this tutorial and it was useful to you, please consider subscribing, liking, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of it and I'll see you on the next one.